Hi, I'm Kathy from Absolutely Fabulous at Home, and today I wanted to talk to you about prepping some of the things for your garden using chalk paint. Chalk paint is so versatile outside, and right now, as we all deal with isolation and finding projects and trying to make our lives more beautiful in one way or another and satisfying, maybe it's time to look at some of those things you have outside. So this is a plain terracotta strawberry container and it's been donated as part of our Renew project series that we've put on hold until we get to the end of this COVID mess. Um, but I thought I might paint it today just to show you how very easy it is to paint for outside. So I'm using Lem Lem. Lem Lem is a color that Annie Sloan developed as a way to fundraise for Oxfam. This is what you do. You paint. When you're painting terracotta, there's really no prep. If this was dirty, I would have washed it, but it's not dirty. It was never outside. It's never been used, so I gave it a really good wipe, but all I have to do is paint it. The terracotta is a little bit porous, which is perfect for chalk paint because it's going to settle into it, be a permanent bond. When you're painting for outside, furniture, pots, chairs, anything, tables, uh, stones, it wouldn't matter what you were doing, anything you wanted to paint for outside using chalk paint, you don't wax it. Because think about it, if you waxed it and it got sunny, the wax is going to get, is going to melt and you're going to have a big mess. So when you're painting with chalk paint, you're just dipping in the edges of the brush. I don't have my brush fully immersed in this. But this is a really fun way to create some color before your flowers come out or before your strawberries become berries. And what I'm going to do is paint it Lem Lem and then I'm going to do a little bit of design on it. So we're going to get a quick coat on here, set it aside. And I think my point with doing this too is just to show you how fast it is to paint small projects using chalk paint. It's a great way to use up little bits of paint that are left from some of your other projects. Or if you wanted to try it for the first time, a project pot is four ounces, 120 mils, and it is enough to do all kinds of little projects like plant pots. This strawberry pot is one form but you could do the terracotta uh, regular plant pots, the ones you can get in all kinds of sizes. At my house I have them done in red and yellow and green and they're just a lot of fun to have them out on the deck. They're color before I have flowers. So I'm not too worried if this isn't perfect because we're going to go over it with another color. Our strawberry pot is all dry. Now you can see some of the terracotta through here. If you wanted, you could go back and do a second coat. But I wanted to get into the detail brushes. Now there are two things, two products I'm showing here from Annie Sloan that I haven't really talked a whole lot about. The mix mat is fantastic. This is a silicone mat that your paint can go on, your paint does not stick to it. So I can do my little dots of paint that I want to work with on here, and when I'm all done, I can just rinse it off. That's on, and one side of the mix mat is the color chart. And this is the same color chart, or mixing chart, that shows you how to take all of the colors in your Annie Sloan color chart and how to mix them. Because that's the beauty of this paint. I don't have to just have three colors and only have three colors. I can take those three colors and I can mix them to a multitude of colors. So what this chart is, is, is it's broken into blues are in one corner, yellows are in another, reds are in the top. Those are your primary colors. From those three colors come all colors in the world. And so what this chart does is it shows you how by mixing a little red with a little yellow, I can come up with an orange. But of course, how the proportions are what give me all those different colors. On the other side of the mix mat, which I can't show you since I just put the paint on it, 
um, is this color chart to help you know which colors to blend. But really, it comes down to what makes you happy. You can mix colors, work with little amounts so that you don't waste the colors, and find what, what works for you. But what I wanted to do on this pot was create some interest. On this side of the mix mat, and we'll get a little closer look up at it, but you can see there are all kinds of little designs and patterns. There are trees, bowls full of flowers, vines, birds, hands, but lots of flowers, lots of patterns, lots of ideas to use. And I thought what might be kind of fun is to take some of our color and use the detail brushes. Now the detail brushes are something I haven't talked about hardly at all. A set of four brushes made to the same quality as all of Annie's brushes and what we're going to have in this set are slide these out of here two flat brushes and they're used to fill in or make big broad strokes a big one or a wide one probably about three quarters of an inch I'm going to say and about a quarter of an inch and two detail brushes these are your pointy brushes these are how you get lines or small detail and we're just going to take I'm using furl the green here and I just want to create a little bit of a, a vine pattern on here I don't know how to do that so that you can see it I'm just going to take it, and this is just free form. This is not any particular pattern. It's just creating a line, bringing something off it, and then creating some leaves. It's kind of folky. I'm not trying to be perfect here. I don't really want that to be the look when we're done. I want it to be whimsical and fun. A little bit of outdoor art so that before my strawberries come in, I have something that would look pretty. And I'm just going to flick there are all kinds of hints on how to use your brushes. So I've just done a very simple vine. Now maybe what I want to do, take a flat brush, not work on that because that is drying. Maybe what I want to do now is create a little bit of a pattern around one of the openings. So I can use my mix mat as a way to get rid of a little bit of the excess paint. Again, this isn't going to be perfect because when you're working with something like terracotta, there, it's, there are imperfections in the terracotta itself. So don't sweat that, just go with it. And I'm just making a pattern using the brush itself. Go all the way around. As I pick up paint, I don't want gobs of paint, so I just pull the paint away a little bit from my puddle, my paint puddle. And I've just gone around and made an opening. So I would probably go around and maybe, to me, that looks a little bit like a sunflower. Now, that's not going to work when it has a strawberry growing out of it, but it's the whimsy of it. This is just supposed to be some fun. You take your brushes, you can study this and see if there's something on here that you like. You can look up patterns in books. There's really no, again, right or wrong way to work with this. You clean the brushes the same way you do all of the others, a little bit of Dawn detergent. And um, or sunlight or some other strong grease lifting detergent and water and let them dry. We're going to put a little bit of red on here. And one thing that's kind of fun, I'll stand over here and do this, 
is you can make just simple little flowers. Just use the brush and make a simple little flower. But you can also take the end of the brush and make some simple little dots. Again, how much talent does that really take? None. You just have to be able to not smudge where you've been. Always, I should have started from the other side so that my hand is not likely to go over where I just painted. I'm not even worried about them being all exactly the same side, but you can see how you're just going to build a pattern. So I'm just going to spend some time working with this. I'm going to add a little bit of the, I've got, the colors I'm using here are Furl, Tilton, um, this, this is Provence, or Florence, sorry, and Emperor's Silk. And maybe I want to do the same thing and add some blue flowers. I would clean my brush between uses unless I'm not worried about the colors blending. But I can just keep going with this until I've covered the whole thing and it's made me happy in a way that until my strawberries come out, it will sit there and be a piece of garden art. Very simple, very therapeutic, great way to use some of the, the accessories to the Annie Sloan line, like the mix mat and the detail brushes. You'll have them forever and ever and ever. You could get all of these colors in a little project pack. A project pack can come with um, three paints or four paints. It's up to you. But it'll come with four little cans, a mixture of paints and waxes. It comes with a number of accessories, cloths for buffing, for wiping in the wax or wiping off the wax. It comes with the checklet or the hints. It comes with brushes not used to get new brushes. It comes with a paint can opener. It comes with everything you need to create and complete some projects for your garden. So happy spring 2020.